The next speaker is uh, Matias Vilkis from Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona, and he's going to speak about uh, real-time calibration of coherent state detectors. Thank you. That's great. So, well, I'm Matias, and uh, I'm a PhD student at Autonomous University of Barcelona. And uh, I will present the work um, on oriented on machine learning um, that we did uh, along with uh, Mateo Rosati, uh, Raúl Morral. Chefes, this is Mateo, this is Raúl, and this is John, my advisor. And uh, okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's introduce the problem. Okay, so what uh, the idea of uh, this project was to cast a problem that uh, we already know. We, we quantum information theorists uh, we know very well, uh, which is a co quantum coherent state discrimination from a different perspective. So what we did is to ask uh, uh, this machine learning model free algorithms, uh, how to given a, a detector, how to how to calibrate it uh, in an optimal way. But assuming that uh, these algorithms or these uh, robots or whatever, they do not know uh, the loss that govern this detector, okay? So the game we are playing is that uh, these uh, monkeys, if you want, uh, like in this picture, they, they just uh, press button and they, uh, they, they don't know nothing else, okay? So they cannot take expected values and uh, rather they have to deal with each measurement outcome, okay? So the question we ask is from a measurement, uh, how well can a monkey do by repeating an experiment to perform better and better um, to discriminate between coherent states, okay? So as an, uh, as an example, there is a, say a canonical example from machine learning, uh, which is called a bandit problem. Whereas uh, the monkey uh, is faced uh, towards uh, boxes, say, uh, five boxes like here, and uh, each box, when sampled, delivers uh, a reward. Okay, the monkey has to sample only, and it can only sample uh, a single box per time. Okay, and the probability of uh, the box n delivering a reward is unknown to the monkey. And uh, what uh, the monkey needs to do is to gather, as the uh, sampling evolves through time, um, more and more rewards, OK? So since the monkey, again, ignores the probability of uh, each uh, box delivering a reward, it will need to balance between exploring uh, further boxes as time evolves. Uh, and uh, between sampling the boxes that uh, it thinks they are the best ones, okay? So this is, um, I think, uh, the spirit of um, this uh, work. So given uh, this uh, robot that needs to control the, the coherent state detector, how to uh, balance uh, different configurations, but still uh, get uh, something meaningful in between in this a learning process, which is the technical word that uh, people from machine learning like to use. So the problem itself that uh, we want to tackle, and I think uh, that uh, quantum state discrimination has widely been mentioned during this conference, uh, it's a, um, well, discriminating between two coherent states of energy alpha, and uh, for simplicity, we chosen along the Q quadrature. And uh, Again, this is a, a, a well-known problem in, uh, for us, but uh, it soon becomes very challenging, not only for experimentalists to implement the optimal uh, discrimination protocol, but uh, also to find out for theories the optimal discrimination protocol if uh, we have, uh, say, more, more states, uh, more than two, or if the states, um, yeah. Okay, so 
Uh, again, this uh, protocol for discrimination is described by a PBM and uh, is uh, bounded by the so-called Hellstrom bound, which uh, if the energy becomes uh, very, very high, uh, things become uh, essentially classical and the probability of distinguishing between the two states, the optimal one, uh, goes to one. Whereas if the energy becomes uh, very low, uh, they, uh, uh, they become more and more undistinguishable. Okay, so this is the quantum effect that uh, we like to study. So the optimal measurement uh, is uh, attained uh, for a binary protocol by a superposition on the difference between uh, the, two, the two states that we want to, to distinguish. In the case of uh, these co two coherent states, uh, like here, this superposition is a superposition on a showing a cut state. And this uh, is uh, very difficult to implement uh, in, in the lab nowadays. Nonetheless, in the 70s, um, Dolinar uh, discovered, um, well, the, his receiver, the Dolinar receiver, which consists on uh, weakly adapting uh, a measurement through, um, through the outcomes that uh, one measure of a displaced signal, okay? So the idea is to uh, split the signal and uh, with one part of the signal, one displays it according to some value that we will ask uh, the robot to, to find out. And uh, then measures uh, the, the display signal with a photo detector. According to this outcome that can be either zero or one, um, we will condition the, the value of the next displacement and so on and so forth until we get to uh, the very last um, layer, say, uh, that we will need to guess for the, for the state, okay? Either uh, plus or minus alpha. So it has been proven that for uh, many, many layers that go into infinite, this capital L here, uh, this receiver attains the, the Hellstrom bound. Nonetheless, um, implementations of these receivers, uh, although it's uh, much more amenable than, um, than projecting on a, uh, than preparing a cut state and projecting, uh, this uh, proves demanding at, uh, at present. So what uh, we liked to ask in this project was uh, the following. How can we put uh, these uh, machine learning algorithms in a very extreme position where we will give them no information, almost none information at all about the receiver. And yet uh, they manage to calibrate and find out which is the, the optimal displacements to do for a fixed L, okay? And uh, the backend, if you want, of uh, all this is that this uh, sounds uh, very useful to calibrate the receiver in the presence of noise. And I will try to show some results if uh, I have time on this. Um, uh, maybe it sounds like uh, we have done the experiment, but uh, I want to clarify that uh, everything is in America simulation so far, okay? So this uh, perfectly fits under the, uh, the framework of reinforcement learning and Markov uh, decision processes um, that um, is a very popular field nowadays or some field of machine learning. Okay, so um, again, the idea is that the, the, the algorithm will, will sample, uh, sorry, will repeat the, the experiment many, many times. And since it ignores the outcome probabilities of uh, these um, detectors, uh, then, oh, sorry, uh, it will, <laughs> it will be given a reward of either one or zero uh, when asking to guess for the, for the input signal, okay? So the, the thing I want to stress is that we would like to, we would like the algorithm or the robot to have uh, some feeling of uh, whether it's performing very well or very bad according to its experience. And this is why we will ask to gather as many rewards as possible and we will study the evolution of the cumulative rewards, say, uh, as um, experiments evolve through time. Okay, so I will.
try not to become super technical with this, but uh, we'll explain a bit on the framework on which uh, these algorithms rely on. And everything comes uh, to Markov decision process where we have uh, this agent that interacts with an environment through time steps and then through episodes, okay? So each time step uh, here will be uh, like each uh, layer uh, of um, the um, uh, receiver and uh, each episode will be a repetition of the experiment and um, the, at each interaction, the environment delivers a reward and shifts its state towards some other state, okay? According to some probability, which again is an unknown to the agent. The agent, according to the state of the environment, will choose uh, the next action to, to perform. And the way it chooses the action is called uh, the action, the, the policy of the agent. Okay, this is uh, some terminology. And in, in our case, uh, and uh, I see it uh, usually happens in the quantum scenario, things uh, are not fully observable. So the agent cannot observe uh, the, the state of the environment, say the quantum state. So this becomes a partially observable Markov decision process where the agent somehow needs to reconstruct the state of the environment. And it uh, does so, um, at least in our case, in a very simple way, which is uh, taking the history of uh, outcomes uh, and um, actions performed, okay? So the objective of uh, the agent is to, um, again, perform the best policy ever, which is, um, the one that attains at its state an action the the highest uh, expected uh, reward or some weighted sum of of the rewards uh, until the end of the episode so this uh, induces uh, the so-called state action value function and uh, this um, in short uh, this state action value function satisfies a self-consistency equation for each policy and this equation is called the Bellman equation. So importantly, this Bellman equation is associated for a given policy. So each policy has uh, unexpected uh, reward, say, and, and uh, this is induced, uh, this is called the state action value function again. And for the optimal policy, the, um, which is the one that uh, the agent would like to find, the, um, the, the corresponding equation um, is a bit different uh, because it maximizes the rewards at each uh, um, table of states and action, and it becomes um, like this, okay? So the optimal policy satisfies the so-called optimal Bellman equation. So uh, the idea of uh, how these algorithms work is that by repeating the, the, the interaction many, many times experiment, the, the agent keeps an estimate of the of the, uh, this uh, state action value function. And uh, the idea is that uh, these algorithms turn this, um, this estimate towards the, 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 the state action value function associated to the optimal policy, which is the one one would like to find. So I would like to mention that given this quantity, it's easily it's it's easy to obtain the op, the optimal policy, and then the optimal configuration of the receiver. Okay, so how things work in our scenario? What we have done is a very simple um, thing, which is to discretize these uh, quantity these displacements, and uh, the, um, the 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 very first thing that the agent needs to do is to choose the first displacement. So it has a series of photons and it needs to choose uh, which displacement to, to do. And it will do so by um, looking at the expected uh, reward that, this first that each first displacement delivers. And um, since uh, we would like to gain as much reward as possible during the learning process, um, there is 
some hyperparameter in the way that uh, we choose uh, these uh, displacements according to the experience. And this is called um, an epsilon greedy policy which with probability epsilon, it performs a random displacement and with probability one minus epsilon, it performs the, um, the, um, the displacement that is the favorite for the, uh, for the agent so far. So next, uh, this, once the signal is displaced and uh, the measurement is done according to the outcome, it decides uh, the, the next displacement. And for this case of two layers, then um, in, it, uh, it measures again, and then it decides uh, according to the history, which guess to um, to to make. Okay, so we would um, now. Okay, so what we did is to plug uh, this uh, formalism or algorithm or formulation into um, a simulation of this uh, receiver, and we cast uh, we casted the evolution. Oops, we casted the evolution of uh, the of some figure of merits. Um, as experiments evolve. And the first figure of merits that we took is the um, number of correct guesses uh, as experiment uh, evolve divided by the number of total experiments, uh, which is the, the line that we, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the plot that I, I depicted above. And below, I, I show the evolution of the success probability of the agent's uh, favorite strategy at each experiment um, done, okay? So as uh, we can see for different values of uh, this uh, parameter that controls the randomness of the action selection, we get different behaviors. So for a, a, a policy that uh, performs completely random, which is uh, this one, which is uh, red, I think, um, um, this is a, an error of myself because I'm colorblind, but okay, it's this one. I don't know if you see my mouse. Um, we get that the average uh, reward uh, is um, uh, one over two, which is um, exactly what it needs to get because it's uh, randomly guessing. Whereas the, um, the success probability uh, of agent's favorite strategy uh, is uh, better and better since uh, the um, agent explores more and more configurations. But then we observe that there is a smartest uh, way to um, uh, choose actions, which is um, decide which action to choose according to the experience that the agent has gathered so far. And this experience is encoded in the, in the this estimate uh, of a Q, this Q hat at each time step. So um, for different values of um, the randomness, um, we see different behaviors. Um, which um, which I consider um, interesting. Okay, um, so the most interesting thing I think it deserves to be mentioned is that uh, for um, for this uh, epsilon to be one over three or uh, zero point three, uh, not only we get a higher uh, cumulative reward but also uh, better strategies are uh, discovered at a finite number of repetitions of experiment. Importantly, um, these, uh, these uh, strategies, the algorithms, beats the optimal um, uh, Gaussian measurement uh, at uh, around uh, 10 to the four repetitions of the experiment, okay? So then uh, inspired in this uh, trade-off between exploring and exploiting uh, uh, actions, um, we managed to improve the action selection um, by, by borrowing some ideas from bandit uh, theory, bandit problems, which is uh, the problem I explained when we began the talk. Um, but I, I don't think we have time to, to explain this. But um, the most uh, relevant feature of uh, these uh, algorithms, I think, is their model-free nature allows to be robust uh, to noise. So what we have done is to conduct some simulations um, where there is, um, again, some noise. For instance, if um, 
the dark ones, uh, if they are dark ones are the photodetectors, which means that the probability of actually um, of getting an outcome zero uh, is uh, lowered by this dark on probability. Um, and uh, what we see is that at a finite number of experiments, uh, these uh, algorithms not only manage to, to, to find the, the right strategy for different uh, values of the dark on probability, but also to perform quite well, which um, I like a lot. So then um, we moved and explored a phase flip of the incoming state. So uh, even if uh, the state uh, is say plus before arriving to the photodetector, it flips its sign and its minus. And then the, the agent, even if guessing for plus, it gets a reward uh, of zero. And it happens uh, the same. Of course, this is at a finite number of uh, measurements. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude my talk and uh, summarize uh, it a bit. So what we have done is to study online optimization of coherent state receivers. And uh, our approach was um, to consider completely model-free agents, which are basically monkeys without uh, uh, menos perceiving the monkeys, okay, uh, that they don't know uh, the physical laws that govern the receiver dynamics. But we managed to, to show that uh, these monkeys can, can learn a definite uh, number of uh, repetitions of the experiment. And, uh, um, and uh, I think this, um, this opens the door and this work to explore uh, much more sophisticated uh, algorithms in machine learning to, to, to tackle or try to discover novel uh, protocols for problems that uh, we don't really know yet how to, how to optimally solve. Um, and finally, we have shown some knowledge robustness. So with this, I would like to thank you, all of you, for, for listening to me. And I'm open for questions if there's time. OK, thank you, Matthias. I'm colorblind too, so thank you for uh, hey. the colors and the graphs. Okay, so we have a, a question in the chat. Uh, Nayere Saverian is a little confused. She, uh, he or she says the Hellstrom bound is for minimum error discrimination, although here we talk about the unambiguous one. Am I right? No, no, no. We are talking about the minimum error discrimination here. So what we want to do is to minimize the, the error probability of getting the states and not the inconclusive. Yeah. OK, so um, there are no more questions uh, there. Okay. So I guess I uh, will thank the speaker again.